All right. I just wanted to talk about the worst film ever created. No, not that one. No, not even that one. No, the movie is called Crush Parentheses ED. The ED, of course, I assume stands for erectile dysfunction because I haven't been able to get an erection since watching this movie. And now, this movie considers itself a comedy. I would classify it more as a horror. Anyways, whatever. After extensive therapy, I'm finally ready to talk about it. The plot of this movie is basically about the real-life Peter Griffin and the week he met his wife. Or as the movie describes it. The week. The week. The week. The week. The week. Oh my god, just look at this title card. Like, what's the budget for this movie anyways? $500,000? They spent five... Did they spend the whole fucking budget on the poster? God, just look at the video quality. This... I mean, this movie looks like it was filmed by the same camera that captured the Kennedy assassination. This movie was made in 2009. You could have filmed it on a fucking Razor flip phone and it would have looked better than this. After the title card, the film cuts to this scene which can best be described as a odd artistic choice at best, right? So the director's just explaining why the music in the scene doesn't match the video. Well, this is a low-budget film. What? No way, dude. I do not believe you. Pull up that budget one more time. Oh, he's right. When the scene was shot, the guy paying for this movie, also known as the executive producer, well, he had seriously flawed expectations. When it came time to pay for this really expensive song, the executive producer suddenly didn't like the music that much. The cheap fix. A lot cheaper than reshooting the scene. Yeah, you know what would have been an even cheaper fix? Not including the scene in the fucking movie! Just include two minutes of tracking shots of nature like every other shitty movie. So now, our boy Wilbur goes to propose to his best girl, and it goes exactly how you would expect. <laughs> oh my god. Wilbur, I, I could never marry you. Our good friend Wilbur is visibly upset, as any man would be after facing such a dramatic ordeal. Well, he's gonna go to his car to sleep it off, but man, this guy just cannot catch a break. Right as he opens his window, he gets fucking tackled out of nowhere by a police officer. Silence! Anything you say, got it won't be used against you! What the fuck was that? Did she just have a stroke on set? Got it won't be used against you! Who the hell is this? A she's wearing a miniskirt. She's supposed to be a police officer and she's wearing a miniskirt. This is clearly just a stripper that they gave an extra five dollars to to be in this fucking movie. And she didn't even remove her stripper outfit. Well, hunky, it looks like it's just you and me. <laughs> Ran into wrong peace officer tonight. Okay, not so peaceful. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. are you allowed to call my people honkies? What the fuck was that? I can't even find words to say this, but you know he ad libbed that shit. Look at the lady's reaction after he says honkies. Yup, that's, that's pretty much how I feel. Oh, oh, I think I broke my ribs. What'd you say about ribs? <laughs> Day, I had quite a headache and very sore ribs. What'd you say about that? I had to go into the office. I work there with my best friends, Ross, Joey, and Chandler. Wait, those names. Where have I heard those names before? They sound so familiar. Oh, yeah. Alright, so here's some of his stupid ass friends. Sorry about Jennifer, but I mean, hey, who, who didn't see that coming? So what now? Oh my god, that acting, it's just, it's so wooden, it's... Unbelievable. Hey, any you guys seen that Courtney Cox around here anywhere? Nope, sorry Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> what is up with all the Friends references? I'm 19 minutes in this movie, and that's the third one so far. What, what are they expecting? They just think someone's gonna watch this movie like, Oh, I, I know that reference, I like this movie now. After a while, Wilbur's friends finally convince him to get back out in the dating game, and his friend Stoner sets him up with one of his girlfriend's friends. Hey, Stoner! Wilbur! What are you doing here, dude? Alright, I just want to point out that this guy is the director of the fucking movie. And I'm pretty sure when they asked him to direct, he's like, Alright, dude, I got one condition. I gotta be in it, and I gotta make out with the hot chick of my choosing. So this is when we're gonna meet the love interest. But guys, there's something Scooter hasn't told us. Hey look, there's something you should know. Yeah? 
She's kind of young. Oh, whoa, whoa. How young we talking here? Like 18, 19? What's your story? Dating a 14 year old? Whoa, 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 my guy, can you please have a seat over here? God damn, well, this shocking revelation makes this even creepier. Stoner, how old is she? I don't know, but she's a real babe. Are you a pedophile? Oh, you thought this shit was over? Well, we're only 27 minutes in. Waiter? Welcome to Chez Chenev. My name is Pierre. How may I help you? Oh, omelette du fromage. This date is over. You know what? I'm just gonna come out and say it. This girl's a real jerk. All right, get up. We're about to go outside and have a conversation like civilized adults. This guy's a fucking hero. Holy shit, is this the same two stripper cops from before? Is there only two cops in this whole town? Doing that! Someone's gotta teach you a lesson! Also, I love how this guy just runs away and no one gives a shit. After being assaulted by police officers again, Wilbur decides he's gonna go on a date with a girl from work. Hey, Wilbur. Hey, Wilbur. If you can't already tell, this girl is a complete fucking lunatic. And on top of that, she's an alcoholic too. Man, our boy oh, Wilbur sure has bad luck with the ladies. Anyways, as the night progresses, this girl keeps drinking more and more until this happens. Oh, Stacy! Oh. oh, can you just get me another drink? <laughs> Here, we ran out of red. This is white wine. <laughs> what the fuck? The sink is literally one foot away from him and he still goes for the fucking fishbowl water. This is genius. This is comedic gold. Mel Brooks could not have done this better. No. Not the stripper cops again. God, I swear every 15 minutes of this fucking movie is the same thing. He goes on a date and then the cops assault him at the end of the night. It's like... Looking at a day in the life of an average black person. After that horrific experience, Wilbur, always the optimist, decides to give dating one last try. Did you know that the Chinese factories enslave children and only pay them four cents an hour? Wait, they're at a Japanese restaurant? Why is she talking about Chinese stuff? Hello. Ah, what the fuck? My name Yum Yum. Okay, so this was actually pretty hilarious just because of the unexpected racism element of it. I mean, this was breakfast at Tiffany's level of racist. I was expecting this guy to just disappear in a cloud of smoke. My name Yum Yum. Have you had a chance to rock a menu? Oh, me so horny. You want to try stir fry dog? Oh, and I just wanted to point out that that Chinese dude is actually the French waiter from before. A little, little fun fact for you there. After they order their food, uh, this crazy biatch decides to chain herself and Wilbur to the table as a form of protest against Chinese people, I guess? Even though they're at a sushi restaurant? Uh, I, I don't know, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And now in a twist which nobody saw coming, the cops show up. Again. Well, she's dead. I hope. At this point, we're only about 47 minutes into the movie, if you can believe that shit. And to be honest, I'm so sick of watching this shit. I've watched this movie about 15 times and no human being should have to endure that type of torture. So I'm just going to skip to the end. Now we're almost at the end, thank God. We're at Wilbur's wedding and we get to revisit all the classic characters in this movie. Remember the Chinese waiter and the French waiter? Yeah, for some reason he's a gay guy now because I guess they forgot to make fun of gay people. The friends and family yet, so come on. Who's next? Step up! We got the, the terrible doing? Asian oh, actor. <laughs> I, I, I'm just kidding, but no, really. I don't understand. We got this guy that I don't give a shit about. Oh, hey, it's Indian Chandler. Let me guess, he's gonna make another dumb friends reference. Uh, Courtney Cox was supposed to come with me. <laughs> I think she went to the wrong address. We got this fucking pedophile. Come over here, babe. No! God, please, no! No! I love it. No! And in a M. Night Shyamalan twist, he ends up marrying the black cop lady who's been beating the shit out of him the whole movie. 
Bet you weren't expecting that. What I can't be a bride? Oh, you think all African American women don't get married? Oh, and I almost forgot. We get to meet his mom, too. He's a damn faggot, you know. I'm his damn mother. All right. Before we end this thing, I want to show you guys literally the only funny scene in the whole movie, and it's at the very end. So it's kind of fitting. It's just a warning shot above his head. It works every time. <laughs> Where the fuck did this guy come from? Why does he have a gun? Now, to end this, I just want to say every aspect of this movie is just horrible. The acting, the directing, the writing. The only decent actor in this movie is the guy who played Wilbur, I guess. And to whoever wrote this shit, stop it. Get some help. This whole movie comes off like an incel fantasy. Every woman is portrayed as either crazy, aggressive, or just an idiot. And I'm not usually one to cry misogyny because, I mean, I hate women. The whole moral of the story is nice guys finish last. And dudes like that can't get women. Not because they're out of shape and socially awkward, but because women are just crazy and stupid. That being said, still better than last season of Game of Thrones. Gamers rise up. Thanks for listening.